Hi, welcome to Bookie. Today we will unlock the book Extraordinary Ordinary People, a memoir of family by Condoleezza Rice. For Rice, this book is not only a memoir about growing up, but also a book about her parents' selfless love. After students at Kent State University were shot while protesting the Vietnam War in 1970, mass student protests and sit-ins erupted on other campuses, including the University of Denver where Rice was studying. At the time, Rice was practicing piano in music school, but her fellow music majors were too busy with their coursework to pay attention to anything else. Rice felt suffocated in such a self-isolating school environment. Her mother was the reason that she majored in music and pursued a career in it. However, she realized that she hated being single-minded with her studies and not caring about other things. She also knew that she would never be good enough to be a top musician. For those reasons, she decided to change her major. Her mother wasn't angry about her decision, instead she just smiled and said, Do you remember when I told you that you weren't old enough or good enough to quit? She added, Now you are old enough and good enough. For the rest of your life your piano will always be there for you. Rice did not find a job in the 1975 recession and reluctantly decided to teach piano. Those around her saw the irony of her situation. Rice had no choice but to do what she had always been afraid of, that is being a piano teacher. Rice felt lost, but her father told her that he believed any setback would be temporary. Well, he said, your mother and I are ready to help you in whatever you decide to do. Rice has said, good parents are a blessing. Her parents never read any books on parenting, they were just good at it. Not perfect, but great. They had high expectations for their daughter but also gave her unconditional love. They were determined to give her opportunities to live a unique and happy life. Rice's stories revealed the support, understanding, love, and dedication of her parents. The way that Rice's parents raised her provided her the freedom to think independently and nurtured her ability to take things in stride. These personal characteristics were key to Rice's accomplishments in Jim Crow era Birmingham, Alabama, in an America that was not always friendly to blacks. So, how did Rice manage to rise in her career step by step? This book provides the answers. Condoleezza Rice is an American female politician. She served as the 66th Secretary of State of the United States, the first African American woman to hold that post in American history. She has distinguished herself in many areas, including overseeing the upheavals in Eastern Europe and the dissolution of the Soviet Union, and protecting an America that was devastated by the September 11th attacks. Before becoming the Secretary of State, she taught at Stanford University and served as its youngest provost in history. Next, let's unlock the essence of this book in the following three parts and see how Rice found her positions. Part 1, A Warm Family. Part 2, Racial Integration. Part 3, Finding Her Place. Let's start with Part 1, A Warm Family. Rice's parents grew up in the darkest time of racial segregation in the southern United States when whites held the power and blacks had little. But if blacks received a good education and were willing to work hard, they could change their circumstances and gain respect from whites. Rice's parents had a good understanding of this societal reality, and they tried hard to preserve their dignity and pride by getting an education. From a historical perspective, education at that time was like an armor that shielded blacks against everything, including racism. Based on their own experience, Rice's parents wanted their child to seize every educational opportunity. Rice's parents were very anxious about getting their child off to an early start. On September 1, 1958, little Condoleezza Rice was sent to Mrs. Jones's classroom. At that time, she was only three years old. When she first started school, she was afraid of the other children and of Mrs. Jones. She did not want to stay in the classroom at all. Finally, she told her mother that she did not want to go to school. She came up with a lame excuse that the teacher always wore the same dress every morning. Although her parents did not buy the logic of their child's argument, 